If you're a person who works with data on a regular basis, it's a good practice to store your data in a tidy format. Tidy format has been defined in many places with the R4 Data Science book by Wickham and Grohlman being one of the more popular ones. Their definition of tidy data states that each variable has to be in a single column. And I've also added for clarification and no variables share a column. Two, each observation must be in a single row and three, each data value has to be in its own cell. While these are simple principles, it's actually very easy to get confused and not understand exactly what they mean. And so I find that it's best to understand these principles by looking at data sets that are not tidy and comparing them to data sets that are tidy. And in fact, the tidy R package provides several data sets specifically built for this purpose. Table one, table two, all the way up through table five are related to tidy data. And these data sets provide data related to tuberculosis cases for various countries in different years, with some of the variables included being country, which is the name of the country, year, which is the year an observation was observed, cases, which is the number of tuberculosis cases observed in the specified year, population, which is the population of the country in the specified year, rate, which is the rate of disease observed in a country in a specified year, where rate is specifically the number of cases divided by the population size. And then the columns 1999 and 2000, which are values of a variable observed for a country in that year. And while these don't may not make sense right now, we're going to talk about them in more detail below. The first rule of tidy data is that every variable should be in a single column and no variable should be in the same column as another variable. To give you an example of when this is not satisfied, we're going to look at table two in the tidy R package. So I'm going to load that data set here and then print it to the R console. And you can see that in this particular data set, we have four columns. We have country, year, type, and count. And country appears to be okay. It's telling you the country uh, that each observation comes from. We have year, which is the year the observations were obtained, no real problem there. But then we have the columns type and count. And what's going on here is that we have the cases for Afghanistan in 1999 on this row and the population for Afghanistan in 1999 in a different row. And at least with respect to this particular rule where every variable should be in its own column and not share the same column as another variable, we see that we really have two different variables in one column here and this column over here is a little bit confusing because it's really telling you the types of values shown in this column right here. So it's kind of in an odd format. And so here we have the cases and population values in a single column. And so it's clear that this is not a tidy data set. And so what we really want here is we want a column for the cases and we want a column for the population in a single column, uh, which would mean that we actually wouldn't even need every other row. So there's a little bit of redundant information here. The second principle of a tidy data set is that each observation in a tidy data set has to be in its own row. You may have recognized that table two, which we previously looked at, violates this rule. If we scroll back up to table two, we see that the observations for a single year of a single country are split into at least two rows in the table two data set. So the observation for Afghanistan in 99 is shown in both rows one and two. The data for Afghanistan in the year 2000 is split across rows three and four. For this to be a tidy data set, the information for Afghanistan in 1999 would have to be on a single row of the data set. Similarly, the information for Afghanistan in the year 2000 would also be on a single row of the data set. The third principle of tidy data sets is that each value in a tidy data set should be in its own cell. And what this practically means is that you shouldn't combine information about two variables into a single cell. This may seem like an artificial use case that you would never see in practice, but you'd be surprised. Non-data scientists, people who don't usually work with data, can be quite creative in how they enter their data into a data set. So it wouldn't be too surprising to see a violation of this principle in a real data set. And this is illustrated by the table three data set and the tidy R package. So I'm gonna load table three here and then print it to the screen. And the reason that this data set violates the third principle of tidy data is that this column literally combines the number of cases with the population size of each country. And so we have two different variables combined together into a single column and it shouldn't be that way. So what we'd really need to do is to split this column 
into two separate columns for cases and population in order for this to be a tidy data set. So let's look at another example of non-tidy data. Time series data are often egregious cases where data are stored in a non-tidy way. For time series data, it's pretty common for the values of a variable to be stored in a time-related column, like day or year, in order to make the data set more compact. Because of that, different variables may be stored across multiple data frames. So tables 4a and 4b in the tidy R package exhibit the type of non-tidiness that we're talking about here. Table 4a provides the case values for each country for each year, while table 4b provides the same type of information but for the population values. So I load those two data sets here and then I print each one of them to the screen. And if we wanted to link these data sets with what the underlying principal violation is, it's that the variable cases is split across multiple columns. So the case values should all be in a single column of the data frame. And similarly, the population values are split across two different columns of this data set here. The second principle violated is that the observations are not only split across different rows, they're actually split across different data frames. And so in this case, what we actually want is we want the values for Afghanistan in 1999 of the cases and the population values. So we have two different principles being violated with this data set, and that's actually pretty common. If one principle is violated in a data set, that one of the other principles is going to be violated as well. At this point, some of you may be saying to yourself, can you please just show me an example of a tidy data set? And so that's what we're going to do right now. So table one is an example of the tidy version of the data set that we have been looking at. As you can see here, we have four different variables. We have country, year, cases, and population, and the values for each variable are in distinct columns. We also satisfy the second property, where each row corresponds to a single observation of a data set. And we also satisfy the third principle, which says that each value has to be in its own cell. Some of you may be thinking to yourself, wait a second, isn't this one observation split across two different rows? because the values for Afghanistan are split across two different rows. And we have the same property for Brazil, we have the same property for China. But in fact, observations are made at a specific time. So while both of these rows of the data frame refer to Afghanistan, I can only observe the values for Afghanistan at a single time point. And so in this case, I've summarized the values for Afghanistan in the year 1999, and I've also separately summarized the values for Afghanistan for the year 2000. If I make measurements on the same subject or object at different time points, those values for the different time points actually constitute different observations of that subject or of that thing. And so they actually should be separate rows of a tidy data set.